Hi, welcome back to Puzzle Insider. I'm Greg from Puzzle Wonder, and today we brought to you the hottest news from the ever expanding world of puzzles. Today we'll talk about some really weird puzzles from Japan. We'll be hunting for award winning puzzles from international puzzle parties. We will also discuss good puzzles to show your friends. And then we've got three interviews one with the designer of the month, which is Dan Fast. Then I'll feature a blogger from the puzzle world, a very good one, in fact. And in the last article, we'll talk about one of the prettiest and most mesmerizing puzzle box kits ever released. Stay tuned and let's start. The Japanese culture is amazing. Personally, I find their history interesting and curious. From samurai to war to their poetry, everything is very cool. And I think all of that has affected their puzzle designs today. Some of the most peculiar puzzle designs ever have been generated in Japan. For example, there are lots of unusual karakuri puzzles, but a very weird and special series of puzzles from Japan are called the Toyo glass puzzles. These are packing puzzles consisting of a glass and really oddly shaped pieces. There are orange slices, plums, peanuts, beans, and even people you need to cram all inside a glass. I find these puzzles super astonishing. I haven't got the chance to solve any of these yet, but they are super weird and unusual and cool and beautiful. What is the weirdest puzzle you own? Let us know in the comments and let's move on to the next article. For this episode, I decided to try a new mini series that is the Puzzle Hunter. In this series, we'll look for interesting puzzles from the puzzle world that I find curious and hopefully you guys find curious as well. After the last video where we saw the award-winning puzzles of the recent international puzzle party, also called the IPP, I saw that there are a lot of interesting award-winning puzzles from last year that are also still available today. Some of these have been remade through the years and even changed their names, but they are still the same puzzle over Roll. 2001 Cassiopeia by Akio Kamei. This is actually a puzzle box that was re released in the last year or two. Also, Sunflower by Oscar Van Deventer looks very familiar. It's actually cast gear from Hanayama, available today for everyone to enjoy. Gold, silver, bronze looks to me like cast chain from Hanayama as well. I'm pretty sure it's the same puzzle. Barcode Burr. Puzzle from Lee Krasno, still available today in plastic. Radix, 2005th puzzle design competition, another Hanayama. We also have the Floppy Cube, first prize. It's a cube you can get anywhere now. I'm not sure if Box with the Tree was released lately by Karakuri, but I saw it on Chris Ram's channel. Cast Loop, of course, one of the best puzzles for beginners. Gonna talk about it a little more later, but got the puzzles award. We've got a Void Cube, which is also widely available twisty puzzles today. Secret Base. I think it's available on Puzzle Master, but I'm not sure. Cast Harmony 2010, yet another Hanayama that is available today. Cast Rattle, another Hanayama, also available today. Smart Egg from 2012 is nowadays a puzzle series called Smart Egg. Double G is Cast the G and G from Hanayama. Square in the Bag, widely available, amazing puzzle, still available today. Helical Bird by Derek Bosch is sometimes available. There's also two more versions, also Helical. This is considered a very tough bird puzzle as far as I know. Galaxy by Bram Cohen is also Cast Galaxy from Hanayama. And then we have Symmetric by Veset Monin, widely available today from Sloyd as I recall, usually available on Puzzle Master. 4L is sometimes available through Miniyuki Uematsu from Japan. Identical Twins by Osanori Yamamoto, I think I saw it. Puzzle Bracelet by Yael Friedman, an Israeli designer. In 2017 we have Galette by Osanori Yamamoto. It was produced both by Pelican and Cubic Dissection. As far as I know, there's still copies available for Puzzle Master. Of course, we have Casino. As far as I know, it is currently out of stock worldwide. Many people have asked me in the past, when is it gonna be available? I don't know for sure. Keep in mind, it should be restocked. Super classic puzzle recommended to everyone, everyone. And also we have Trinity by Q Wong, which also was made by Hanayama. Jigson 29 by Yuasaka. Funny fact, was remade recently by Hanayama in a smaller version and slightly easier is actually available as well and a nosy puzzle still available coral basket sometimes you may find it from in yuki yamatsu modrian blocks available really widely and it's a good puzzle it has a lot of replayability and even an application 
to that. We have Cast Water by Ki Wong, also made by Hanayama. Wave 5 Top 10 Vote Getter by Yuasaka, available widely. Get it, it's good. Euclid for Kids should be available someday from Pelican. It's a very, very good puzzle. And also we have Sisyphus by John Lehman. And I, I looked into this puzzle because it was so interesting for me. Like, what is this? It's extremely interesting. The concept is uh, something new for me. I tried to find it on the internet. Sadly, I didn't find any way to get it currently. I think it's out of production, but it's cool regardless. Lockbox, as of now, I see that Lockbox was recently re-released. I'm not sure if it's gonna be released again but it's for sure one of the best puzzle boxes from Eric Fuller. Burbot is sometimes available from Andrew Crowell. Cyclone is available for everyone from Anayama. Brass Monkey 4 available from two Brass Monkeys. Fit the Monkey as well still available and everything else is sadly not available. Hopefully you get a lot of ideas of puzzles to buy. Most of this shouldn't cost much more than their retail price because they are still available. All other IPP puzzles are probably very expensive. So if you'd like to try award-winning puzzles, these are probably the best ones to get currently since they are the least rare of the bunch. And let's move on to the next article. There's nothing more satisfying than using a puzzle you've already solved to entertain your friend. But that actually might be a double-edged sword. Because if the puzzle is too difficult or maybe too expensive or too big, it might scare your friends off and they will lose interest really fast. Talking from experience. <laughs> so how do you do it? My go-to puzzles are Hanayama's. I like showing cast loop. This is always the first puzzle I show to my friends. It is extremely simple. All you have are two identical pieces and your goal is to make a loop out of these two pieces. It is simple, it is fun, it is tactile and it's a great puzzle to start with for a friend. Also, I like introducing my friends to different kinds of puzzles because every different puzzle type requires a little different type of thinking. Some people may enjoy packing puzzles more, other people might enjoy disentanglement puzzles more and there's really no rule to what puzzles are the best to let friends try. Encourage your friends, let them try your puzzles, don't be judgmental on them and let them enjoy themselves solving your own puzzles. This is a great way to maximize value you get from your own puzzles and also it's really fun watching your friends solve them. What's your go-to puzzles to share with your friends? Let me know in the comments and let's move on to the next article. When I was younger I used to watch a lot of cubing videos. One of the YouTubers I used to watch was the crazy bad cuber also known as Dan. Bass, a Canada-based content creator. Today, Dan is a puzzle designer, mainly designing interlocking puzzles. As a creative person, he is heavily involved in all sorts of creation, from puzzle designing, to playing music, and even composing it. This is a recurring theme, actually, because if you saw the last episode, we had Cuberly, which is formerly Ken Solve, which also writes his own music for his own video. I believe being creative is a massive source for boosting one's self-esteem and confidence. I encourage everybody to try and create something they are proud of regardless of what it may be so they can always look bad at an accomplishment. In 2009, Dan was dating a girl. The roommate has an unsolved Rubik's Cube on their television. In the next four hours, Dan completely ignores his date and solved the Rubik's Cube. And then they became together for nine years, where also Dan became the crazy bad cube. His honorable mentions puzzles are Thor's Hammer by Stefan Baumager, which we have interviewed in the previous episode, Supernova by Alphonse Eichmanns. It's a level 166 per with 18 pieces, which is a big accomplishment. The first puzzle he designed was a twisty puzzle and was inspired by a YouTube channel called Sun Winder. Dan actually stopped making puzzle videos as a crazy bad cuber, and that's because of two main reasons. First, he got tired of making the same type of content over and over again and gradually lost his passion for what he was doing. Second of all, incomes were dropping and he had to resort to chasing another career path that he really wanted. After he paid all his debts, he is now able to come back full throttle to the puzzle world. He always kept on designing puzzles even when he was creating YouTube videos so he didn't really transition from puzzle solver to puzzle designer. His puzzles are colorful, creative and new and he was mentored by some of the best puzzle designers in the world. Now that Dan is back he plans to launch his own puzzle brand for selling puzzles and also open a new YouTube channel. So thank you very much for sharing Dan and let's move on to the creator of puzzles. So far I've only featured puzzle video creators on here but the OG puzzle content creators were actually puzzle bloggers. Today I hosted Brent from 5 Sinatras, one of the newer puzzle bloggers that doesn't fail to entertain. Brent is an easygoing person, introverted, funny. He's helped a lot of people get into the puzzle niche. His recommendations are actually read by many many puzzles. After reading a lot of OG puzzle blogs like Puzzle Mad, Allard's Puzzling Times, 
Jerry Spuddle blog and Boxes and Booze, Brent fell into the rabbit hole of puzzling. Back then, Mr. Puzzle was uploading videos and Chris Ramsey only started making puzzle videos. And there was not a lot of people making puzzle content as there are today. For Brent, making blog posts about his puzzles was the best outlet for his passion to this hobby. Brent's style is very affectionate and enthusiastic towards the puzzles he solves. He doesn't try to review them, but he tries to show his love to them and passion in a fun and entertaining way. Brent enjoys a variety of puzzle channels. He tries to abstain from watching soul videos because that may spoil the puzzle for him, aside of really, really rare cases. Brent really is a serious collector of puzzles. Some of the puzzle channels he likes are What Did I Get Myself Into, who shares puzzling passion with his own daughter, Beats and Pieces, a France-based channel doing cool puzzle quiz shows, Mr. Puzzle for his ability to map complex mechanisms, and Puzzle Wonder for orientational videos for new puzzlers. His inspiration for posts are the puzzles themselves or the idea of introducing a certain store or designer to newer puzzlers. How can we play favorites when so many great puzzles exist? Brent favors sequential discovery puzzle boxes and more and more puzzle designers enter the scene and make these puzzles lately. His least favorite puzzle is the B-Box which needs setup to work properly. Even if you know that you need to set up, he says, it can be actually a pretty cool puzzle. No puzzle can be perfect, except of course a few upcoming puzzles I designed in collaboration with Frederick Boucher, which are obviously the greatest puzzles ever made. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brent. Keep creating and let's move on to the puzzle of one. There is a company from France called NKD Puzzle, a pretty special one as it makes puzzle kits from laser cut wood. Their kits are mesmerizing. They range from the simplest puzzles that you can arrange with a few pieces to extremely complex puzzles you need to work tens of hours to build. And the featured puzzle of the month is going to be the architectural kit from NKD Puzzle. This is an extremely beautiful puzzle kit that takes tens of hours to assemble. It is designed by Christophe Laron. Hopefully I said the name correctly in French. The puzzle is extremely beautiful. The exterior design is mesmerizing and artistic. You can really get lost in all the details. It is extremely pretty. It is inspired by the likes of Hayao Miyazaki and especially from the film Howl's Moving Castle, a classic. Asher and his illusions. Mito Ueda, a Japanese game designer that designed the game Shadow of the Colossus, which is amazing and the game journey all of these have been inspirational for christoph and the concepts that originated from these games and films filled christoph's head with ideas which then were transcribed to a piece of paper and then became a puzzle the way he makes his puzzles is by first scribbling his ideas and concepts and then adding them all up together having to sometimes get rid of some concepts and leave them up for later and then he designs everything into one d model his future design designs will probably be less complex, but Christoph is adventurous and experimental and I'm sure he'll come up with interesting designs in the future. I'm sure he won't disappoint. And that was it for Puzzle Insider episode 8. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd really appreciate it if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel, we'd really appreciate that a lot. If you have any ideas for articles, let me know, I will work on them and show them to everyone here to watch and enjoy. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode.